Twilight Prince 123 or in the... Wait, what do you mean this is the wrong channel? Oh, fuck you. Give me that! Hey! Hey, it's Mega Gray here, your real host, and... I could say that I'm not in Kansas anymore, but I'd be lying. I actually am in Kansas right now. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, on to business. Once a franchise hits a certain number of sequels, critics tend to get a bug up their collective asses. Fur fine seems to be when cynicism settles in. But what about Final Fantasy V? Ridiculously addictive job system, simple but brilliant plot, perfect 16-bit masterpiece. And let's not forget Mega Man 5 on the NES. A lot of people overlook it for the second and third games, but it's just as fun as the other ones. Even if the special weapons were a little average. Or there's Silent Hill 5, Homecoming. Critics panic saying that the more fluid controls make it less scary. Uh, bullshit. Look at these things. They have, what, axe blades for heads that thing of, like droopy ball sacks? Don't care how good the control is, I don't want to get anywhere near that shit. So, what about the fifth game for the Metal Slug series? I mean, it's not as if the sequels do anything drastic, it's basically always the same damn thing. Unfortunately, since I have a very limited budget, there is no way I could like afford an arcade cabinet of Metal Slug 5, much less a Neo Geo to play it on. So, we'll just have to use the next best thing. Metal Slug Anthology. So, which one are we going to use? Free play. Free play. What? So, this one starts deep in some South American jungle or some shit like that. Was SNK going for the Indiana Jones vibe? If so, it's pretty funny in hindsight, since this feels more like the ass end of the fourth instead of the intro to the first. Except this one doesn't have any aliens. <laughs> Good point. Actually, aliens would have made perfect sense here, believe it or not. So true. That's the weirdest thing about this one. No General Morton, no Alan O'Neill, no alien invasion. Yeah, I've played through this sucker plenty of times and I still have no fucking clue what the what this bullshit is about. Then again, it's Metal Slug. You don't need to. It's a shmup in its purest form. Two hot bitches blowing shit up. Just one little thing. Who the heck decided to add in a sliding maneuver? It gets me killed far too much. Bullshit. I say it should have stayed for the following sequels. See? <clears throat> right. And what about character transformations? We got zombies and mummies and other stuff in the previous games, and all we're left with is fat chicks! Uh, all the nitpicky bitching aside, it's still pretty damn good. Balls to the wall, fuck up once and die, shooter action at its best. Lots of variety of weapon pickups with which to dish out the carnage, and of course, the popular slug vehicles when it's time to acerate legions of enemies sideways. Speaking of the slugs, aren't they supposed to take, like, more than one hit, unlike right here? Then again, skillful players can keep their vehicle throughout a boss fight and watch their score skyrocket. Well, level 2 starts out with SNK's affirmative action girls going through a mountain area to infiltrate a base. And by infiltrate, I mean blow the piss out of everything in sight. And to top it off, there is an obligatory giant elevator in this level. I'm not saying anything's wrong with blowing up mechanized turtles while going down at mind-blowing speeds. As for the boss, it takes place entirely in the air, with the ladies utilizing rocket packs in case their plane tunes instead clog with all the bullshit headed their way. Like Theo had to, thanks to your sucking bite me. Piss off. Okay, level 3 inspires Dirty Minds Everywhere by having these two army brats start alone in a van, then running out to greet screaming civilians running from Godzilla, letting himself go on fajita night, I don't know. Wait, wait, what? Shy guys in my Metal Slug? Fuck that. I don't know if this game mind rapes you as hard as any other Metal Slug. There's a reason we're using free play on an anthology. I myself can beat the original console without the Konami code, but... FUCK! Damn it. 
Anyways, that aside, the boss of Level 3 is a robot that climbs up and down the outside, blowing your brains out with rockets, giant bullets, and a screaming noise that makes your ears and the floor pop. Once it's dealt with, the fourth mission starts at some port, and halfway through it, you free a prisoner who's way too into Dragon Ball Z. But this guy does seem to be a mainstay in the series. As long as whoever rescued him stays alive, he'll literally throw Hadoukens at everything. Of course, if you die, he leaves, and that's quite likely to happen, sadly. Shortly after that, the whole affair moves underwater, avoiding mines and blowing the shit out of Metroids. At this point, you gotta admit, plenty of effort was made so there'd be variety. One mission has an aerial boss battle, and here we go underwater. But this part right here reminds me of Super Metroid, with that tube you bombed to enter Meridia. And in hindsight, this climb up the stairs feels a bit like near the end of Halo 2? Yeah, well once that's done, it's boss time again. Dude, hold on. We were just underwater, and now we're in the Middle East with oil fields in the back? What next? More importantly though, this boss loves abusing death from above. It's possible to dodge this easily, but get in the corner and that probability drops immensely. But, so will his iron ass after enough punishment. And more vehicular variety for the start of the last mission. We got hot chicks and fast cars with machine guns mounted on the side. Better yet, a smart-ass Genki curl in what is possibly the best vehicle in any metal slug. It has a harpoon. Need I say more? You don't keep it for long, though. And these bitches still got quite a warpath to go on. Doesn't help when they're besieged by a shit ton of enemy slugs, not to mention Shy Guys now crossfed with Dry Bones. They keep fucking getting back up! And let's not forget the things right before the final boss. Too high to toss grenades at, these swinging elephant trucks shoot out laser snot balls and later try to freaking teabag you. And once they're dealt with, we get the answer to the 20 million dollar question. What's the final boss that replaces Morden and the alien invaders? A weird supernatural demon that makes you sh that makes sure that you still don't know what the hell is going on story-wise. It's only vulnerable on the skull on its chest. But now when it comes to its attacks, the white fireballs raining down can be avoided easily enough Thanks to the slide maneuver Twy love so much. Shut up. That is, until you get a whole shitstorm of them crashing down everywhere. Oh, are you damn sure that both players are at one far side of the tower when the scythe comes down? Otherwise... You are going to burn. However supernatural or not, it'll still fall to conventional weapons and fly off back to God knows where. And even though this clusterfuck of a boss was nothing to sneeze at, Theo does. But who gives a shit if the story has zero connection to the other Metal Slug games? The delightfully ball-crushing difficulty is still there, so is the kick-ass arsenal, the fluid control, and awesome two-player blast on fun. Not quite as epic as Metal Slug 3 or Metal Slug 6, but hardly suffering from sequelitis. Just like old-school Mega Man, it never gets old. Never. My final verdict, 8.75 out of 10.